Yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'll be breaking down the episode 3 of X-Men 97. Before we get into this video, make sure to like, subscribe, comment, share, and turn on those post notifications so you can know if I want to post a new video. Now, without further ado, let's get into it. This episode opens up with us seeing how Jean Grey ended up at the X-Men's house. What she went through, where she was, and we also see the clone of Jean Grey go through her memories. And if you notice at the face, at like all the faces of Jean, they are faceless. There's nothing there. And then we see Morph transform into Spiral after saying, who votes for us all to call this Jean Grey, Jean Doe? And Spiral is a character that we saw in the original X-Men animated show. I also just want to say that this episode does alter the story of Cable slash Nathan's origin slightly. Because in the comics, like I said in my last video, we all know that Apocalypse was the one that gave Nathan slash Cable his virus. Which is why he needed to go to the future and get cured. But in this show, they're having it just be Sinister who gives Nathan the virus. And that is the reason why he needs to go to the future to find the cure. And if you watch the original X-Men show, you know that Sinister was planning this all along. He was planning to kidnap Jean and make a genetically superior offspring of hers for his own benefit. And then as this clone G is having some hard time processing what's going on, she goes into her room where she is visited by Mr. Sinister through the baby monitor. And as Mr. Sinister talks to her, this activates something in her body that makes her transform into the Goblin Queen. And when she does, she says, they shall know my inferno. And that word inferno is a reference to the comics, which talks about the origin of Madeline and explores the same events that are happening in the show. Then we switch to the scene of Morph going through the time scans for the danger room. And all we see is Magneto and Rogue using this room to, let's just say, be together. Because as we saw in the last episode, we know that Magneto is able to touch Rogue without having his abilities being taken away or him dying. And you might be wondering, how is he able to do this? Well, in the comics, they explain this. Magneto is able to create a thin magnet field around his entire body, which allows him not to be affected by Rogue's powers. And in the comics, Rogue and Magneto, for some reason, they actually got married and had a kid. Which shouldn't be okay, because if you look up the ages between Rogue and Magneto, yeah, that's just like, why? Whose idea was this to make them miraculously have feelings for each other? That's just... Anyways, moving on. And during the Goblin Queen's attack, we see Jubilee and Sunspot on the couch, and they're watching a the movie. And then, the movie comes to life and jumps out of the screen and turns into Sunspot's mom. And then switching over to Morph, who is also being affected by this Goblin Queen attack, he says not again when he sees Sinister about to attack him. And he says not again, which is referring to the original X-Men show, when in season two, Sinister uses Morph to help him kidnap the X-Men. And then switching over to Bishop, we get a vision of him seeing his sister, Shard, from the future, who which we saw in the original X-Men show as well. And after the attack from the Goblin Queen is over, she takes the baby and takes him to Mr. Sinister. And Morph, Magneto, and Cyclops go after her. And this is where we see Morph transform into Magic, being Colossus' sister. And back at the house, we see Jean, who is now back, and she wants to help fight the Goblin Queen. But she is in no condition to fight her physically. So Jean fights the Goblin Queen mentally. And she makes this kind of astro field version of herself and stops the... Goblin Queen from hurting Cyclops and she takes the Goblin Queen into her mind where they visit all these early memories of Jean Grey. One of those being her first time meeting Professor X and we also see her holding a Cyclops toy. This might be a reference to her being with Cyclops in the future. And then we also see a memory of her friend dying by being hit by a car which sparks Jean's powers in the comics. Then after that whole mind game, Jean's plans work and she helps Madeline snap back into reality. And her and Scott go to fight Mr. Sinister. And this is where we see Scott shoot a beam and leaving a hole in Sinister's body. And this is unusual because if you watch the original X-Men series, you would know that anytime he's ever been hit, he immediately heals. But for some reason, Scott's laser beams is the exception to this rule because every time he hits Mr. Sinister, it leaves a hole in his body where he cannot heal as fast as he can any other attack. And I have no idea why. But after that, Mr. Sinister runs away and Jean 
aka Madeline and Scott rescue the baby and this is when they find out he has a virus and they need to take him to Bishop and Beast to find a cure. And there they find out that the cure for whatever disease or virus that Nathan has is in the future. And Bishop, being from the future, says that he knows a guy that has a cure for Nathan. And he offers to take him there. Which is another switch because in the comics, somebody else being Ascani took Nathan to the future, specifically in the 39th century. And the guy that is supposedly has the cure for Nathan's disease is Forge, who we see at the end of this episode with Storm, but this is his younger self. Then at the end of this entire episode, we get the most heartbreaking scene ever, where we see Madeline having to give up her baby to go to the future so he will not die, but she will never get to see him again, and neither will Cyclops, which is actually really sad. <laughs> It's enough to make a grown man cry. But yeah, that's all I have for you guys today. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment, share if you enjoyed the video and if you learned anything from this breakdown. But be sure to leave your thoughts about this episode in the comments down below. And I'll see y'all in my next one. Peace.